Hey, it's Joe from SupplementClarity.com. Today, I want to talk about whether magnesium can help depression. Got a lot to talk about in this video, so let's jump right into it. So why magnesium? Well, the answer is kind of simple. Magnesium is important in the body. It's often overlooked, but it takes part in over 300 different metabolic reactions in the body many of those reactions occurring in the brain and central nervous system. And then one other point that I think most people don't think about is that chronic stress has been shown in studies to lower magnesium levels. So if you're stressed, it lowers magnesium, and could that play a role in depression? Well, maybe. Let's look at some of the studies. So we've got this report of what they call subclinical magnesium deficiency. In other words, you're getting magnesium in your diet, but you're not getting enough. And these researchers report that as many as perhaps 50% of the American population may be subclinically deficient in magnesium by not getting enough of it in their diet. I think this may also uh, apply to other uh, similar nations as well. So, Here's an investigation from 2019, uh, pretty straightforward, the dietary magnesium intake and the risk of depression. They looked at over 17,000 people and they, these researchers conclude dietary magnesium intake was inversely associated with the risk of depression. In other words, low levels of magnesium mean more depression. That's an interesting observation, but it is an observation nonetheless because they didn't actually go in and give people magnesium. They just looked at people who had depression, they measured their magnesium, and they concluded that depression and magnesium were related somehow. It's interesting, and, I, and again, it is, does go back to what I said before about perhaps maybe some people having subclinical magnesium deficiency. But let's move on. So here's an investigation from 2013. Is magnesium citrate, that's a form of magnesium, is magnesium citrate effective for pain in people with fibromyalgia? So fibromyalgia, it's a chronic pain condition where people feel uh, pain at different parts of their body and they also experience depression. So they give them either 300 milligrams of magnesium citrate or they give them an antidepressant medication or they give them both magnesium and the antidepressant medication, and they do this every day for two months. So these researchers conclude that, yeah, magnesium does appear to reduce pain in people with fibromyalgia. They also point out that perhaps maybe uh, fibromyalgia may be linked to low levels of magnesium. But, we, but the greater point is they're getting at here is, is that the magnesium and the antidepressant medication appeared to work even better. Again, it's, it's an interesting study, but it does point out that for people who have, say, fibromyalgia, that magnesium may be something to take a look at. Again, I'm going to link to my other review of fibromyalgia and a supplement called Ribose, which I find very, very interesting. So you can check that out if you have fibromyalgia. But again, magnesium plus the antidepressant appeared to work better. So that's kind of a mixed bag here, but it's not the only study I got for you here. So we've got this study, the role of magnesium and the treatment of depression a randomized clinical trial. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere. So this is actually a clinical trial of magnesium in people with depression. 126 people with mild to moderate depression are given either 248 milligrams of elemental magnesium, that's usually what you wanna look for in a supplement, or they're given no treatment at all, nothing, okay, for six weeks. Again, that's the drawback to this particular study, by the way. It's not a placebo study. They compared magnesium to nothing. I would have liked this study better if it was magnesium versus a placebo, but it is what it is. So these researchers conclude that consumption of magnesium for six weeks results in a clinically significant improvement in depression and an improvement in anxiety as well. So magnesium is helping depression, magnesium is helping anxiety levels as well, and it, it, it improved these, these parameters regardless of your age or your gender, didn't matter if you're a man or a woman or what your age was, and the effects of magnesium occurred quickly within two weeks. So actually began to work very, very quickly, didn't really have any side effects, and over 60% of the people said they would continue taking magnesium in the future, which again is another testament to how well it appeared to be working in these individuals. So that's an interesting investigation. 
Now we've got this study, uh, the efficacy and safety of magnesium uh, for the treatment of depression in older adults with type 2 diabetes. It's another randomized trial. So why diabetes? Well, there is some association between, again, low levels of magnesium and diabetes. That's most likely why they picked this group. So it's a small study, 23 older people with type 2 diabetes, and this is important, they started off with low levels of magnesium to begin with. So they, 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 didn't, have, they, they didn't have high levels of magnesium, they had low levels of magnesium. They give them either an antidepressant medication or they give them 450 milligrams of, of magnesium, elemental magnesium, for three months. They give it to them in this uh, solution, this magnesium chloride solution, which again, you can get you know, solutions of magnesium, uh, but most supplements are uh, basically capsules or caplets or something like that. So they find essentially in this study kind of something kind of interesting, the magnesium works the same. Magnesium supplements improve depression as well as the antidepressant drug here is. And this is what they're saying is, in conclusion, magnesium chloride is as effective in the treatment of depression in older uh, type 2 diabetics with low levels of magnesium as the antidepressant medication. So that's really interesting. So it appeared, at least in this small study, it appeared that magnesium worked as well as an antidepressant medication. This is not the only study though. Then we've got this study from 2018. This is an interesting study. I was debating whether I was gonna include it or not, and I'll tell you why in a second. But in other words, basically they're saying, the, the title kind of tells you everything. The superiority of magnesium and vitamin B6 over magnesium alone on severe stress in healthy adults uh, with low levels of magnesium. So essentially here, they're saying here in the study that magnesium plus vitamin B6 worked better than magnesium alone in the study. So essentially they gave people 300 milligrams of magnesium and 30 milligrams of vitamin B6. And they said that combination worked better than for lowering depression than say magnesium by itself. Here's why I was kind of hesitant on whether I was gonna include it or not, because they say magnesium supplement, supplementation alleviates stress in adults and they, with low levels of magnesium. And they say the addition of B6 to magnesium was not superior to magnesium alone. I think that's a typo. I think that little knot is a typo because the study says magnesium plus B6 is better than magnesium alone. And then I read that sentence and I'm like, is that a typo? I think it is because when I read the study, I did really didn't see that uh, anywhere else. So why would, for instance, B6 help magnesium work better? One of the rationales is that vitamin B6 may lead to a greater level of magnesium in the body. In other words, B6 may increase the blood levels of magnesium. So really, we're it's just not that the magnesium and the B6 are, are synergistically working. It's the fact that the B6 is helping maybe the magnesium work better? That's a thought. And there is some evidence that B6 does raise magnesium levels. So another interesting study, um, but it's not the only one I got for you. Then we come to this very interesting paper that I want to delve into a little deeper here. Rapid recovery of major depression using magnesium treatment. This is not a clinical study per se. It's a paper that reports the effects of magnesium on four different people suffering from depression. So let me show you these four people, and let me then show you the results of what happened when they took magnesium. So here they are, I kind of summarize it from the study. You've got these four people, You've got a 59 year old man, he's, uh, he's a manic depressive, he's having suicidal thoughts. A 23 year old woman, she has traumatic brain injury that occurred five years prior to the study, short term memory loss, and she's had a decline in her IQ, okay? A 35-year-old woman suffering from postpartum depression, she's already had some kids, and a 40-year-old man who's uh, depressed and he's got alcohol and drug and, 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 and overeating issues. Dosage, and this is important, and, and, and I, I really appreciate him telling us this. So we look at the 59-year-old man, he's using uh, 300 milligrams of magnesium taurinate um, each with each meal and at bed. This is essentially uh, magnesium combined with taurine, an amino acid. Notice the same thing down here for the 23-year-old woman, 200 milligrams of magnesium taurinate with each meal and at bed. 
the 35 year old woman, 200 milligrams of magnesium glycinate. That's interesting with each meal and in bed. Notice the trend here. And then you got the 40 year old guy. He's given 525 milligrams of that magnesium taurinate again with each meal and at bedtime, okay? And I, well, it was important, I thought, to tell you this because if you're thinking about this, uh, they really laid it really out very nicely uh, for people to kind of get an idea of what was going on. Let's look at what happened to them. Start with a 59-year-old man, and I, I really want to quote these researchers here because their, their words are, are, are really grab your attention. The 59-year-old man experienced life-saving benefits from magnesium. The very first night, his sleep was restored to essentially normal, and within four days, his depression was greatly reduced for four to six hours after each magnesium dosage. So magnesium appeared to alleviate depression for up to six hours every time he took it. His anxiety continued to disappear. His headaches also continued to disappear. And they also point out, in, in, and I thought this was very interesting, in this patient, depression always occurred within an hour of taking 500 milligrams of calcium carbonate a day as a supplement. So something to think about if you're depressed and you're taking a calcium supplement. Um, I, I may want to look into this as a future video, but that was quite interesting. But... The, 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 the depression went away. It was abolished. It, as they say here, it was extinguishable. It went away within one hour of taking 400 milligrams of magnesium. So his depression got worse when he took a calcium supplement, but when he took the magnesium, it went away within an hour. I find that very interesting. Let's move on to the 23-year-old woman. Again, really interesting results. Within one week of using magnesium supplements, the 23-year-old woman became free of depression. Wow, I don't, I don't see these words very often in clinical studies, so I thought it was worthy to bring it to your attention. Her short-term memory and IQ also returned. They improved. Wow, I've never heard that before. Again, they point out this had previously been shown in rats. I have not seen this happen in other human, uh, human reports before. And then they also point out her mental acuity returned nearly immediately upon magnesium, even though her traumatic brain injury occurred five years before this study occurred. Th Again, I haven't seen a lot of research on traumatic brain injury and magnesium supplementation, so I found this very intriguing. We look at the 35-year-old woman suffering from postpartum depression. She didn't have it. No more postpartum depression when she took magnesium supplements. And if we look at that 40-year-old guy, he finds himself, they say, free of depression within a week of supplements. His craving for smoking and drugs and alcohol disappear. His ravenous appetite goes away and he begins to lose weight. That is, is, again, really, really interesting. I, again, I want to point you out that this is not a clinical trial. This is essentially a summary of four lone individuals and what happened to them when they took magnesium supplements. So keep that in mind. Clinical trials, I think, are really the best evidence. But in the absence of that, I, I wanted to bring this to your attention because, again, this is some really interesting results we're seeing here. So... I sum it up with this uh, investigation, again, brand new from 2020, the role of magnesium and mental disorders. This is a review of many different studies. So essentially here, these researchers looked at 32 previous investigations of magnesium and mental disorders in general, but of those 32, 18 of those studies involved depression. Now, of those 18 studies on depression, they say 12 of them mainly show positive results with depression from magnesium supplements. Seven of those studies show a significant correlation between reduced levels of magnesium and depression. So in other words, we're back to low levels of magnesium, more depression. Really, really interesting association. And then they sum it off, as scientists usually do with their clinical speak, and they usually say, you know, from the available evidence, it emerges that supplementation with magnesium could be beneficial. So according to most of these studies, it could be beneficial for depression. And then they do follow this up by saying, we need better studies on magnesium and depression. And I would agree with that. I think the studies that I presented are interesting, but I really do believe they need to be followed up with larger randomized clinical studies of people getting magnesium versus the placebo and combine that with maybe food and magnesium, et cetera, to get a better idea of what's happening. So 
Let me sum this up. I got four closing thoughts here. Are all the studies of magnesium and depression positive? No, they're not. I didn't show you those studies, but they are out there. That said, the majority of the studies I have seen on magnesium and depression show there does appear to be some association between low levels of magnesium and greater amounts of depression. Again, not all the studies say this, but enough of them do that makes this a very intriguing topic worthy of future research. Another thing. Does depression equal low magnesium levels? Could What's going on here? Why is this? Is, is it possible that when you're depressed, you eat a poorer diet and this in turn leads to low magnesium levels? We all eat junk food when we're depressed, so that brings into role the thought of maybe a, a, a diet and depression. That's something else that should be looked at. Give people with depression a better diet to see if that helps depression as well. What foods, by the way, what foods have depression or what foods have magnesium? Easy. Any food that's green will have magnesium. Any food that has fiber will have magnesium. So what are we talking about here? Fruits and veggies. Fruits and veggies and beans and seeds, they have magnesium. And then lastly, is it possible that some drugs, some prescription medications lower magnesium levels and making things worse? Or maybe, maybe causing a side effect, depression, that maybe you didn't think. Yeah, there are some prescription medications that can lower magnesium levels in the body, perhaps bringing on depression as a byproduct, so to speak. That is something else to consider. And if you're taking prescription medications, I think maybe you might want to ask your doctor and maybe your pharmacist, can this drug lower magnesium levels? And because maybe, who knows, maybe when you're taking a medication, you may feel a little, a little depressed. Could this be the reason why? Oh, and while we're on the topic, I just don't want to uh, uh, negate supplements here. Yeah, some supplements can also lower magnesium levels. I'll tell you one right now, it's getting a lot of publicity, vitamin D. Yeah, turns out you need magnesium to metabolize vitamin D. So you do see low levels of magnesium in people who take lots and lots of vitamin D. Keep that in mind as well. So what do you think? Does magnesium work? The writing on the wall says it may, but depression is complicated, so I would encourage you to speak with your doctor. I think that that might give you the best answer, but uh, hopefully I've given you some things to think about. Uh, again, if this has helped you, share it with your friends, uh, and again, if you want to learn more, uh, you can subscribe to my, uh, my, my health and fitness and supplement newsletters. You can do that at either of my websites, joe-cannon.com or supplementclarity.com. Until next time, I'm Joe Cannon. I'll talk to you later. Take care.